Thank you for listening to the Limitless Spirit Podcast. This is the conversation about faith, hope, and the impact we're designed to make as Christians on the world around us. Your host, Helen Todd, the Vice President of World Missions Alliance, has spent over two decades traveling to the world's hotspots to meet the spiritual and physical needs of those who are desperate. She interviews guests from different walks of life whose stories, books, and ideas examine today's most pressing issues and challenges of being a Christian today and inspire you to action. Alice and I started dating in 1952, and I think we had a wonderful marriage. She passed four years ago. I sat down uh, beside her bed and She was not uh, in a coherent stage at that point, but this precious nurse pulled up a chair beside me. She was scheduled to go off duty at 6 that morning. She never left until 7.30 when Alice passed, and she spoke of her life, and she'd had some difficulty too, and uh, we prayed together and cried together. And uh, it was a strange and yet wonderful conclusion of uh, the life journey for Alice. Hello, I'm Helen Todd, the host of the Limitless Spirit podcast. You just heard today's guest, Lowell Glidden. He shares about losing his wife of 60 years, Alice. Actually, his story reminds me of the passage in Psalms 92 that says, The righteous flourish like the palm tree planted in the house of the Lord. They still bear fruit in old age. That is what Lowell's life is all about. Even in his late 80s, Lowell is still bearing fruit for Jesus. Whether it was that moment when he prayed with the nurse or when he's gone on mission trips to share the gospel, his life has been defined by this faithful service to God in his work, in his marriage, and in his ministry. I'm honored that Lowell is joining me today to share his story, and we will talk about his service in the Korean War, a profound call he heard from God to go to enemy's country to share the gospel, and about being married to the same person for 60 years, and even finding God's beauty in loss. Lowell's life is very relatable and yet remarkable in its own way. Let's dive in. Good morning, Lowell. Thank you for coming as a guest on the Limitless Spirits podcast. How are you doing this beautiful morning? I'm doing very well, Helen. It's a below zero morning up here in northern Maine, but the sun is shining. So, And the daylight hours are getting longer, and so that's pleasant. And uh, I've been through it before, so I can live with it. <laughs> that sounds great. And you are a lifelong resident of Maine. And by the way, how old are you, Lowell? I am 88. I'll be 89 come August. I got to know you when you connected with World Missions Alliance. I think it was the 90s and started traveling with us on the mission field to some very exciting places all over the world. Even though you've lived in Maine most of your life, I know that for a brief period of time, uh, you were away from home when you served in the Korean War. Were you already married to your wife, Alice, at that time? No, I had, uh, Alice and I had started dating in 1952, and in February of 53, I got the uh, letter from the Army that says, uh, I want you, and so I, I left February of 53 came home in February of 55, and we were not married until 57. So there was a little lull in there. Oh, so your love was tried and tested by the time of separation and waiting. I'm sure that made it all worth it, though, when you were finally married. And so how long have you and Alice been married? Well, Alice passed four years this month that she passed. And we were married 60 years shy, four months. So I call it 60 years, but uh, it's not quite that. I never got to meet Alice in person, unfortunately. And all I know about her is the way that you spoke of her. And that really ministered to my heart. I, I would see you on a mission trip somewhere in Nepal or other 
countries, you know, where, where the Lord sent you with World Missions Alliance. And I think I got to know you through the love that you had for your wife. I saw this man who served in the military and a very competent person in your trade as a as an accountant. And at the same time, I saw this man who had a very tender and poetic love for your wife. And so I, I sort of got to know Alice and and love her through your stories and and your love for her. So tell me, what was your marriage like? I think we had a wonderful marriage. We seldom, if ever, argued about things. Alice was very conservative, and she held conservative views as well as I. We just complimented one another in in the things that we had to do. There was seldom, seldom any disagreement. She ran the household, especially I was gone a lot during our working years. I was on the road with the IRS uh, usually a week, a month, and then I was gone on weekends with the reserves, Army Reserves, and uh, she took care of the family and she took care of them well. It seems like almost an unreal thing to be married for 60 years and not argue about much. What was the secret of your marriage without arguments? Well, we were both Christians, devoted Christians, and we just thought alike about so many things that there was really nothing to argue about. I don't ever remember having any great difficulty or reservations in our discussions, but we we were just just alike. Things she would she would suggest things, and I would agree, and vice versa. Alice was a gem. She never went on a missions trip, but she was always willing to pack my clothes and be very careful about putting everything in the right place and always welcomed me to come home. And she was a great supporter of my mission strips. Without her, I could not have done it. Now, in addition to working for the IRS and being in the Army Reserves, you were also very active in your church as a Sunday school teacher and, and a youth leader. Was Alice also actively involved in your church? Yes, she was. She was treasurer up through within uh, the last five or six years when her uh, uh, ability to think and so forth began to become affected by Parkinson's disease that she acquired. So she, she was treasurer for I don't know how many years, 15, 18, maybe more. I was in the uh, church. I was an usher. I was still my usher. I was an usher at 16 years old. I still am. Have you been in the same church pretty much all your life? All my life. All my life, yeah. Helen, I went to church there in my, in my mother's womb. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I stayed there, yeah. You know, there is much to be said for this kind of commitment because it's something that you rarely see in modern day life. You know, commitment is not a concept that is valued. Commitment, loyalty, and the fact that you've been in in the same church all your life, even in your mother's womb, and you've been married to the same woman for 60 years, it's just um, quite a testimony, I must say. So being so active already in your life and having your life very full, I have to ask, what prompted you to go on your first mission trip? Well, that's interesting. The first mission trip was in 1995, and I think it was Chuck's brother that took us to Russia. And I didn't go on another mission trip until 2000 when I went to uh, Shenzhen for the dedication of the large church that was there. But in 95, Brother and Sister Garlock were at the church for revival services, and he mentioned that he was going to Russia in 95 or uh, or maybe it was 94, but there was uh, four of us from our church that became interested, and we 
we get in on that uh, original trip in 95 to Russia. I have to ask, when you served in the Korean War, Russia or Soviet Union at the time was really the enemy in some respect behind the situation, behind the conflict. So as a soldier, you know, you're trained against your enemy. So what what, what specifically prompted your heart to go to Russia on that first mission trip? And what did you feel going to the enemy's camp, so to speak, to share the gospel? Well, wars are fought by young men, but it's the leadership of any particular country that seems to make the decision as to whether to go to war or not to go to war. I had no reluctance about going to Russia because of the Cold War thing that had taken place. I trained in infantry to kill a man with a bullet, bayonet, or a piece of piano wire, whatever had to be done in times of war, and you were dedicated to it. But as far as wanting or having someone of a country to become a mortal and continued enemy, no, never felt that. I felt a great love for the uh, Russian people, still do. Have you ever actually killed a person in the war? No. Helen, when I was drafted into the service, I told the Lord, I'm not asking for any favors from you because I'm a Christian. Whatever comes to me, whatever assignments come to me, I'll accept them. And while I was waiting in Fort Lewis, Washington for shipment overseas in July of 53, the armistice was signed and I shipped out two days later, but because of the restrictions on the number of personnel that was allowed in Korea after the armistice, I went to Japan. And I spent a year and a half in Japan in a mountain infantry unit working for the school commandant and the exec. As I said, I didn't ask the Lord for any favors, but all through my military career, Helen, the Lord favored me. And uh, I, I know that. And looking back, I know it more and more. But uh, he gave me some great assignments and uh, people to work with and people that I uh, worked with that I come to love and respect. Well, it doesn't surprise me at all because you have been very faithful to God ever since your conversion experience at a very young age. And God favors his people. And so I think it's beautiful that even in the military service, he guarded you and watched over you and uh, eventually brought you to the country that was considered your enemy to share love. So tell me what was perhaps the most memorable moment during that first mission trip to Russia. Russia in 1995 was a wild place. <laughs> it was free from communism, but it was pretty much overrun by mafia and very poor political leadership. And it was, it was just a crazy place. So what were some of your impressions and what was your favorite moment during that mission? I know you've had so many other mission trips since then, but that First one, I'm sure that was was memorable. It was a, a little difficult getting there because we had a three-hour delay in Rome. But getting into Moscow in the middle of the night and going through their intake procedures was probably the worst experience of my life. But I had a dream many, many years ago, 35, 40 years ago, that I was in Russia and I was looking for a church or a place between two buildings. As I passed this building, there was a knock on the window. I stopped and looked, and there was a lady there who beckoned me with her hand to come. That was a dream that I had that did not mean anything to me until I went to bed and went to sleep the second night in Russia, and I was awakened 
And I remembered that dream, and I said, can that possibly be connected with this trip? And I related it the next morning at breakfast, and it was confirmed that we were at the right place at the right time. And this this lady was Mother Russia beckoning for us to come. How beautiful. That dream was years prior, not, not right before the... Yes, many years. And uh, when it came to me, I knew that, that the Lord had reminded me of it because I, I was asleep and I woke up in bed and I, and I had a crying spell because I, I knew that uh, I was the right place at the right time. That is incredible. Well, since then, you made quite a few mission trips. Your next one was a trip to China, a very memorable trip to China when we were dedicating the church that was completed with the help of World Missions Alliance at the time was the largest church building in the entire China. Then, as you mentioned earlier, Alice became ill with Parkinson's and she required full-time care on your part and you cared very tenderly for her. And so this put your missionary career on pause, so to speak. Was this a challenging time in your life, Lowell? It was. I never charged God foolishly saying, why did this happen to me? I, I think we all have times in our lives when things are pretty adverse that we could say, Lord, why me? But we are not promised as Christians to have a, a bed of roses or a very smooth sailing, but the Lord has promised to be with us. And and so it was 2015 that it became evident that Alice was uh, becoming incapacitated and she had her first fall. It was in the house. She broke a hip, went in the hospital, had surgery, came home. Three months later, she fell and broke the other leg severely. And it was back in the hospital, rehab, and home. And then it was in a wheelchair to take care of her. And uh, I did have some help from some medical authorities uh, locally. But uh, it remained that way until this was, uh, I think, uh, the mind and the act of God, too. I got a call from the nursing home. Uh, The lady there said, we have a spot in the nursing home for your wife if you bring her this afternoon or tomorrow morning, no later. And it was there was a 45-person wait to get in there, and I never anticipated being able to do that, but because she had been in the hospital a length of time in rehab, she was able to transfer into the nursing home uh, immediately. And so she was there two years and two days, and I visited her every day, sometimes twice, every night certainly, but I did not uh, feel free to go on any trips during that time. Uh, You never know what uh, uh, was coming up. So uh, she was my responsibility, and uh, she was my my, uh, place of, of service for the Lord at that particular time, and then she passed four years ago. Watching your loved one that you have been with for an enormous part of your life, and two have become one, you know, you become one person in marriage. So watching a person this close to you to deteriorate and then pass, even though you know that they transition to a better place and a better life, it's it's extremely challenging. And now that some time have passed, I want to ask you, what helped you through this time? What helped you cope with your grief? My church uh, body were very helpful to me. Uh, my pastor was uh, very helpful. My two sons live out of state. Uh, the youngest one in, in the Boston area comes uh, more often than one who lives in Virginia. But I had a uh, telephone connection with both sons every day, as I still do. I talk with the boys 
every night, almost barring none, even now. But um, I'll tell you, there was a strange experience in the, in the nursing home, Helen, that I still tear up now about. But the nurse that was on duty the night before, knowing that Alice was close to leaving, she said, do you want me to call you anytime tomorrow uh, if I see a big change? And I said, yes. And so it was at four o'clock in the morning that she called and she said, I think you better come. I sat down uh, beside her bed and she was not uh, in a coherent stage at that point. But this precious nurse pulled up a chair beside me. She was scheduled to go off duty at six that morning. She never left until 7.30 when Alice passed. And she spoke of her life, and she'd had some difficulty too. And uh, we prayed together and cried together. And uh, it was a strange and yet wonderful conclusion of uh, the life journey for Alice. I think it's beautiful because she was in that moment of ministering to someone, she was there with you, even though she was unconscious, even in her passing, she was there by your side. And uh, what a beautiful conclusion of your years together. So, my goodness, I can't even imagine the, the emptiness and sadness that you probably felt when she passed. But then at some point, you felt like God called you to return back to the mission field. How did that happen? Well, I've been retired 30 years, and some people would gasp when they heard that, but I retired in 1990 from federal service. But I had always had in my mind a service to the Lord in some man way and manner, and sometimes I, I get a little teary-eyed to think maybe that I cheated the Lord by not giving my life to uh, some type of full-time service than when I did. But I realized that the type of work that I'd done in the, uh, in the military and so forth furnished me the funds that I needed, and I could travel once a year or twice a year. Uh, I love people. I love people, regardless of uh, their culture or the color of their skin. Uh, that's no different there. Paul the Apostle said, we are all of one blood. Uh, too bad that our nation didn't realize that we are all of one blood. But anyway, the fervor was still there. It remains there. And uh, right now, of course, uh, years, age is kind of against me, but uh, we'll see. You know, I'll go as uh, the Lord prospers and the COVID gets uh, settled. You have always lived a very purposeful life in your work, in your service, in your church, in your family. Do you feel that your missionary work has added to it? And if so, how has it changed you? In what ways you are different since you have started doing the missions work? Well, I don't think anybody who's ever been on a missions trip can say that it didn't change them for the better. Somehow, in making the effort, and it's an effort getting through airports and making schedules and so forth, it becomes not a chore to you, it becomes a, a privilege to you, knowing that you are doing something of value. And the problem comes that we don't know how much good we do, and as a result, the enemy of our soul can say, you're not doing any good. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. Why don't you stay home? Well, that might be all right for some, but I have a uh, desire to serve God in this manner, in this capacity, and in, in my church. And I, of course, I'm treasurer of a campground, religious campground, and, and along with the tax work that I do every year, uh, I like people. I volunteer uh, with the AARP tax aid program. I've been doing that for 30 years, and, and I'm just about to start it again this year. So uh, I just like people and uh, glad to serve. I love that. 
you've you've mentioned that you love people several times through this interview, and I think this is the theme of your life. And I think this genuine love for people is what compels us and drives us out of that comfort zone that we so much enjoy and prefer to stay in. That love drives us out of the comfort zone and to the unknown parts of the world just to share that love. And I think that you have lived out this purpose very well. And I know we have a bit of a lull in travel right now with the pandemic, but I know that there are more mission trips left for you, Lowell. And age is not a limitation if the Lord prompts your heart. So we look forward to this time when our paths connect again, whether it is on the mission field or here in this, in our country. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview and everything that you have shared. It blessed me and I know that it will bless and encourage our listeners. Helen, one last word, I'll say that there's life after death. Thank you. Amen. One of the things that Lowell said at the end of the interview sums it up so well. I just like people and I'm glad to serve. Shouldn't we all have this philosophy as Christians? We can't be good servants of God, good Christians, unless we love people. And this love prompts us sometimes to do things we never thought we were capable of. As you heard in this interview, Lowell has been involved with World Missions Alliance for over 20 years. Perhaps you too would like to be involved in the Great Commission actively. To learn more about the work we're doing, visit our website, rfwma.org. There is information about upcoming mission trips and also about the Greater Purpose Conference. I'm really excited about it. It's happening in May in Branson, Missouri, and the conference will focus on how we can have a heart for the harvest by reaching out to others with the good news of Jesus Christ. Again, visit rfwma.org. Thank you for listening. I'm Helen Todd. Limitless Spirit is produced by World Missions Alliance. If you believe in the importance of the Great Commission, sharing Christ around the world and helping those in need, check out our website, rfwma.org. If you liked what you heard, consider supporting the Limitless Spirit podcast by going to rfwma.org slash give. Subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform and leave us a review. Tune in next week for another exciting episode.